Hello listeners, this is part 2 of our 2021 Halloween special. Part 3 will release on Saturday. Content warning, one of the monsters is childlike and does get engaged in combat, so there are injuries to a childlike monster. This occurs between 19 and 20 minutes. Feel free to skip over that time zone. Hope you enjoy the show. The party has ended and demons have arrived. The king has been unalived. A mysterious pact with a demon, no less, is playing a game of three-dimensional chess. The villain of the story we have not met. On today's episode of Are We Dead Yet? All right, John heard us. All right, so you guys are just gonna unstealthily walk into the kitchen. Yeah, maybe it can be talked to. I don't know. Yeah, Thurlow's gonna waltz right in, and he's not really, he's gonna like glance at them, but he's gonna like start looking through the cabinets for alcohol. Just n- n- not saying anything. You're a halfling, correct? Yes. Hopefully there's a stool nearby. <laughs> cool, so you, uh, you hear one of them get up and you hear these, these giant footsteps. This one looks like a little snack. You're gonna do well. And uh, he's gonna start moving towards you. All right, am I alone in there or did Gigi come in? Gigi's here, Gigi's by the doorway. Oh, okay, so how about Gigi is gonna see this happen and then she's gonna step up and be like, hello, good sir. How are you on this fine evening? And Kermit's going to come in and just be like, I can help you find the liquor. And I cast Locate Object. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so many fresh meals for me to eat. Uh, Master, what's that? I can't eat these ones, but they look so tasty. And uh, the little one's going to kind of scurry around the corner and go. And he's going he's gonna to see Kermit. And he's going to go, Papa, I've never had frog's legs before. They are not as good as they are touted, young one. Uh, Thurlow's going to pick up on the big one saying meals and finally turn and look at him and be like, Hi, meals, where are they at? What you talking about? I totally ignored what you said, Zoe. You said, hello, how are you? Yeah. It's going to look at you specifically now and and say, uh, how am I? No one ever asks how I am. Well, it's a pleasant evening. And are you hungry? Do you need a meal? I have some bread in my backpack. I have plenty of food. Come sit with me. And he's going to motion for you to come over to the table with him and his son. (sighs) Oh, God, I'm scared. Okay. (laughs) Thurlow's going to go as well, hearing the offer of food. (laughs) Oh, God. He's going to start rummaging through a pile of bodies near the end of the dining table, and he's going to ask, do you prefer human or elf? You know, I'm a reformed uh, person, and uh, I don't eat meat and murder. Then we have nothing in common. But that's okay. We could share drinks. I drinks. Uh A quick note, uh, Kermit, the little one is standing behind you, just licking its chops mercilessly. Okay, well, I'm still casting Locate Object to try and find this liquor. You've located uh, several bottles of, like, cooking wine and cooking sherry at this point. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll point and I'll say, there is liquor in that cabinet over there, if you're still looking, Mr. Uh, Squid Hands. And throw a little bit. Ah, thank the seas. Jesus, yes, Thurlow, get us the drink. Let us all share a drink together. And then he'll grab the cooking sherry and bring it back, set it down on the table. They're like, aye, it's not much, but I've had worse. And he'll take a swig. <laughs> and I'm going to turn around and see this little kid who is still quite a, a, a few feet taller than Kermit. Yeah, Kermit's only two foot, three feet, three inches tall. Oh yeah, this this kid is like seven feet tall. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Perfect. And I'm going to say hello, 
young one, you look quite hungry. Please don't touch my skin. You will get poisoned. <coughs> I am Kermit. What is your name? My name. What is my name? My name's Hungry. Hi, Hungry. I'm Dad. No, <laughs> that's a little joke. <laughs> You know what? I never thought we would be having a nice table side with a ugly thing, piggy thingy, majiggy. With a giant pig demon, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so the 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 big one's gonna yell, "Boy, leave that one alone. We can't eat these ones. Come, sit down, have a feast." And he's gonna pull uh, two live people. It's, we're gonna have a um, we're gonna have a half elf woman and a, a human man up on the table now. They're all like tied up with rope and the big one is going to look over to uh, Thurlow and be, what's your favorite cut? I, you know what? I think I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm, uh, I'm turning, swaying off meat as well. Uh, he's going to look to Kermit and you. Are there any insects or shrubbery nearby that I could use for sustenance? And he's gonna look to uh, Finley here. Surely you'll take my gift of food. Uh, I'm pretty sure Finley's not in the room with us. Oh, Finley is not with us. Never mind. Uh, Finley and Doctor yeah. Hector are both. Yeah, definitely we're still not hiding. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Sorry. Sorry. Doctor Hector is actually like from the hallway. He's gonna like shake his head, mutter fools to himself, and continue on to the library. Okay, so as you approach the library door, I need a perception roll, but hold on to that for a second. Of course. You have all refused this kind being's gifts, and he's becoming visibly angered. He just twists the man's leg off at the knee and starts, like, stress-eating it. Okay, uh, she's going to be standing up and slowly wrap his arms around the people. Or, because they're on the table, right? Yeah, they're on the table like tied up and shit. So he's gonna hold his hands and be like, good sir, I don't believe these people should be eaten unless they have volunteered to, but I don't think they have. They do not look like they have volunteered and I do not believe in murder. So I will be taking these people now. How's a 19 to hit? Oh no, it hit me. Okay, Ooh, that's a lot of d6. But let me, I don't think I can, wait, can I use, Oh, you already said it, Never mind. What did you wanna use? Intimidating presence? No. You can try after the attack. That's fine. That's going to be nine slashing damage to you as he uh, slashes you across the face. We're going to take a quick pause. Dr. Hector, what was that perception check? It was a 16. 16. So you hear a large creature pacing the library and you hear uh, a large metal object being drug across the ground as well. Um, How big is the door to the library? It's the same size as the kitchen. Would you like to look through? Can I see anything through the window? Yeah, give me uh, one more perception roll. 21. Okay. You sort of, you're not really sure. You see the white flesh of a a large creature uh, between some bookshelves. A lot of it looks like bone, but you can't really discern what it is, only its size. It's at least 10 feet tall. Gotcha. Dr. Mordo is going to uh, shake his head, be like internally thinking that uh, he needs bodies to throw at this thing to get where he needs to go. So he's going to go back to the kitchen to try and get everybody to come with him. Okay. And right there, I'm going to have everyone go ahead and roll me um, initiative. Uh, Gigi, you do get one free action before uh, initiative order starts if you wanted to do that thing. 18. Nat 20 for a total of 28. You have an 8 initiative? I took alert. I can't be surprised. Holy shit. I have a helmet that lets me do the same thing. 16. 17. I got 11. I'm not doing so good for someone who has advantage on initiatives. This thing's a sad, sad time. All right, Zoe, you said that um, you didn't want to do your intimidating thing? No. Okay. Do I still get to do an action before? Yeah, you can still do an action before. I'll give that to you. I'm going to start raging. Let's go. Okay. Uh, Describe what does GG do when they enter this rage? Oh, no. (laughs) 
I'm just imagining the Hulk. I mean, Hulk, yeah, right? He's gonna rip out of his little, his little druid outfit. He's gonna slam his book down. Meh. <laughs> Cause he has this little spell book with him. Slam it down on the ground. And yeah, he's gonna let out a little roar. Ah! There you go. All right, uh, Josh. I don't know, I'm bad at describing these things. No, you're good. I just want to give you a chance to. Josh, you're up. Yeah. Oh, I see we have resorted to fighting. Okay, well, that's all well and good. I'm going to take an action and break one of the bottles of drow poison against my battle axe. Okay. Um, so basically applying it to the battle axe. Um, so a creature that takes piercing or slashing damage from the object um, will have to pass a constitution saving throw um, or be poisoned for the next hour. So nothing too exciting, but, you know. Um, it has some other effects, too, if it fails by five or more. So, But that'll be for my next attack um, or my next turn. And then as a bonus action... Do I really only have one bonus action spell? Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. Uh, that's it f- for my turn. Okay. Chris, your character is up next. I'm assuming the little one is right next to Kermit still. Uh, no, it's actually sitting. Uh, it was sitting just to the side of where the uh, big one was sitting. You guys are all sort of around um, like, a, like a small like dining table for the kitchen staff inside the kitchen. So Gigi and I are across the table from the big one, right? Or is it within combat range with Gigi? Uh, it's in combat range with Gigi for sure. So if you were sitting next to Gigi, I'd say you're also within combat range. Are we flanking? <laughs> are, you, are you trying to ask if you're flanking? Uh, yeah, I'm just yeah trying to determine Yeah, yeah whether... I'll give you flanking right now. All right. Um, I'm deciding exactly how I want to throw out to do this. Yeah. I'll just go, go the usual. He'll get up and be like, I, of course, a man can't enjoy his drink. And he'll walk around the back of, uh, you know, well, I'm assuming I can move my way like around the table to his side without provoking opportunity attack. Sure. And uh, he's going to go ahead and give him a poke along with his sneak attack and the booming attack, and then he's going to round it off with a short row attack with his bonus action for a total of 51 damage. That's a big hit. Then he's going to uh, do as usual, just to walk back over to the other side of the table, sit down, and uh, resume nursing his drink. (laughs) Alrighty. Uh, Dr. Van Hector... (laughs) <laughs> it's Hector Van. <laughs> oh, Hector Van Mordow. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Doctor, lots of syllable names. You're next. Uh, how close to the kitchen are you going to let me be to participate in the fight? Oh, I thought you were at the library. He was I came over back. at the door next to the library. That is 100 and t- or No, that's 240 feet away almost. So I'm going to say that you're... Uh, if you... I'll give you this. If you use your action to dash this turn, you can be at the doorway to the kitchen. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that, and that'll be my turn. All right. Gigi? Gigi's going to go ham. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go. So Gigi's going to hopefully swing his axe, but he's going to use Great Weapon Master. So hopefully this works out the way I want it to. We'll I see. So. We'll see. If not, well, you know what? Life's sad. Five, 25 to hit. That hits. Yay! <laughs> mm-hmm. 21 damage. Okay. I think you have a second attack. I do have an extra attack. Let's do the same thing again. Uh, 12? I don't think that's going to work out. <laughs> that's not going to hit. Yeah, that's fine. So then Gigi's going to slash at the guy, at the whatever this ugly thing's chest. <laughs> with his great axe. After your attack on it, you notice there's like, sort of like a rune-inscribed collar around the Nelfeshni's neck. Just set it, there it is, that's what it is. And he's going to uh, rip it off and he's gonna scream, Now I will have my feast and Master can't tell me no. 
uh, he begins emitting like a, a sparkling prismatic light. Can I get a uh, wisdom saving throw from everyone in the room? Which should be everyone but uh, Dr. Hector since you're at the doorway. Isn't Finley still out there? I'm still on the other side of the oh, door. Okay, so everyone but uh, Finley and Hector then. Wisdom saving? Correct. 24. 17. Ah, that's even worse! <laughs> Thanks, Cloak. You're not helping me at all. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, so uh, Gigi has mindless rage. You cannot be charmed or frightened while raging. So nothing happens to anybody. Um, that said, uh, he's going to make a uh, flurry of attacks now. Uh, GG, that's going to be a nat 20 and a 25 to hit. Yeah, they both hit. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to use dice roller for this one. Uh, the first one was a critical, so he's going to go in to bite you, and he does a really good job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so that's going to be 66 damage for the first hit, but that's halved. So 33? Correct. And then the second hit's going to be uh, 16 slashing damage. And then the little one is going to jump across the table at Kermit. <laughs> and he's oh, going to no. make... He's been eyeballing that tasty frog leg. He has. Oh, my God. Okay. So that's a nat 20 and then oh a God. 22 to hit. Both of those hit. But if it touches me, it has to make a DC 12 constitution saving throw. Uh, that's 11 and 12 damage as he flies across the table and swipes at you with both claws. Oh, uh, please, please don't touch me. Oh, ow, that hurt. Okay, you're probably going to die. Um, and he does not have to give a con save as he is immune to poison. <laughs> Motherfucker. Yep. Sorry, buddy. Uh, back okay. to the top. Josh, it is your turn. Uh, okay, so after Kermit sees the little one... Uh, actually like touch him and not get hurt he's going to look down and just be like oh that is most fascinating all right you're you're not hurt by touching me i think we could have been friends in another life sadly that is not this one give me your leg and i'll be your best friend i will give you something more valuable than my leg and i'm going to cast Oh, yeah. I'm, okay. I know. I'm going to cast a uh, holy weapon as a bonus action. Okay. Um, so my weapon is now imbued with holy power until the spell ends. Um, it emits light, bright light, 30 feet, and then an additional 30 feet dim light. And when I make an attack, it deals an extra 2d8 radiant damage. Um, and it becomes magical for the duration. Okay. And then I'm going to swing piggy at this person. Uh, how is a 26 to hit? Gonna be a miss, my friend. What? I'm kidding. That's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's Halloween. I just spooked your ass. <laughs> um, so that is uh, nine slashing damage, magical. Okay. And then 2d8 uh, radiant. Eight. And seven is 15 radiant damage against okay. this thing. So 13? 15. 15. Yes. I think that's it. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, on that hit as well, I'm going to channel Divinity um, and deal an extra 29 necrotic damage to this creature. Oh, my God. Using Touch of Death. And necrotic damage that I deal ignores um, resistances, if there's any. Well, describe one-shotting this small, vulnerable <laughs> child. <laughs> uh, this child monster, let's be clear here. Um, Still a child. I, I actually make direct eye contact with its um, parental figure. Oh, and as fuck. I'm looking at him, I just bring Piggy down two-handed, just psh, right on the top of this thing's skull and you see like a bright light emit from where it connects and then that bright light is then drowned out by like this necrotic dark energy just kind of enveloping over this little creature I mean seven foot creature so like I hop up to do this by the way so 
and the small helpless fiend crumbles into a pool of like black sticky tar and settles on the ground. So Gigi's gonna look over and see the pile and go, <laughs> no more frog legs for him. <laughs> That's it. All right. Uh, is that your turn, Josh? <laughs> yes. All right, Chris, you're up. Uh, yeah, taking scant notice of what's going on about the room as he continues to sip. He's just going to... Uh, the big guy hasn't moved, right? Uh, no, he has not moved from his spot yet. All right, he's just going to uh, mid-sip, casually pull out his hand crossbow and just do a Team Fortress 2 spy classic uh, face stab sneak attack just uh, bolt between the eyes on him okay all right 25 to hit that's a hit for 29 damage and i'm going to uh do nothing with my bonus action and uh continue to sip away the cooking sherry is not bad dr mordhau van hector as I reach the kitchen, um, passing Finley, uh, Hector is going to ask as he's going in, are they still feasting on human flesh with de- with devils? Uh, I, I I haven't poked my head in in a minute. and There's there's some commotion, but I, 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 you can look. Mm. And he just continues on in to see the carnage that's happening. Um, is there a f- one to five pound object uh, within the room? There are several pots and pans weighing between one and five pounds. Uh, I would like to pick one at random and I'm going to cast catapult on it. Okay. For artificery flare, Dr. Morehow just kind of throws a magnet onto whatever pot or pan, and then another one onto the adult Nalfishne. And I need him to make a dexterity saving throw. DC 17. Okie dokie. Uh, can you roll damage for me? 14 bludgeoning. 14, we're gonna go ahead and double that because he crit failed that dex save. As Hell yeah. you find the largest cast iron pan the spell could possibly <laughs> lift and fling it and hit him between the eyes. And uh, that'll be that'll be my turn. Alrighty. Uh, next up is Finley, Mr. Jones. All right. Uh, let's go. Let's get our button there. Um, Finley's like done this... done pepping himself up. Yep. Is this still standing? Yeah, it's still standing. Cool. Uh, Zoe's still standing by it, right? Or Gigi? Yeah, her um, and. Thurlow and Kermit are kind of all around it right now. Perfect. Roll a sneak attack for nat 20. Oh, God. (laughs) Freaking you and your damn sneak attacks all hitting, (laughs) all getting that critical. (laughs) He's got those DMs dice. Well, David's dice like to roll crit anyway, so, you know. Yeah, we all have experience with that one. He's got so many D20s to pick from. He can just pick whichever one's working best that day. <laughs> 47 piercing damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I rolled low. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I just kind of slip my way through the doorway, throw a knife in between everybody, and I'm going to use my bonus action to dash across the kitchen to try and get to the other side of it. Okay. Uh, and you dash your way to a door. Perfect. Uh, Gigi, you're up. Fuck yeah. Great master shenanigans. Oh. Does a 17 hit? 17 does not hit. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, good thing I'm... You know what? Life's not going so well with the great master sword. So we're going to go... Luckily, I have a bonus action. Yay. Yay, yay but I didn't do Great Master for this one. So 24 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Cool. 15 damage. Slashing 15? damage. Okay. All right. And uh, so after 
after seeing this little frog man cut his boy down, uh, taking a frying pan or a cast iron pan to the face and getting slapped with a great axe, this creature just lets out this guttural roar and charges Kermit. Oh no. 29, 27, Ooh. and 12. Two of those hit. Uh, so it's going to be 42 damage. Uh, so 62 damage total. Fuck me running. As he runs in and he, he gives you a one, two with the claws and then just bites down on your shoulder. Okay. <laughs> Cleric ain't looking so good. <laughs> and... Uh, after doing that, he lets out another guttural scream, and we're back to the top of the order with you, Josh. Yeah. Well, I still got my holy weapon. I'm just gonna hit him. I'm just gonna hit him with my with my axe. Okay. Do do do. How is a 19 to hit? That hits. Cool. Eight slashing damage. 14 holy damage or radiant damage. 29 necrotic damage, and then another D8 of necrotic damage for four. Describe the killing blow. Fuck. <laughs> this one is significantly taller than the boy, right? This is uh, a good, like, 14 feet tall. Okay, so uh, what I do, since I'm down near his knees, is I'm going to slash both of his knees real quick with my axe. Like, just, like, one, one swipe across the kneecaps to kind of bring him down. Okay. And then I'm just uh, going to say, good night now. And I'm going to hit him on the head. <laughs> Hop up and hit him on the head and cause that damage. And uh, he too takes the wound and uh, falls and sort of reduces into a boiling pile of goo. Yeah, Thurlow's going to uh, raise his bottle and, and toast and cheer. They're like, ah, oh, come at the pig slayer. I'll be telling tales of this for generations yet. Yes, it's a shame that they could, you know, just flagrantly touch my poisonous skin and not die. <laughs> He's offended. <laughs> I, but uh, now what do we do about them? He's going to gesture to the, the legless man. Uh, Gigi's going to mm -hmm. end the rage, by the way. Go back to normal. Pick up his book again. The legless man has bled out. Uh. Oh, she appears to have passed out from shock at this point. Um, she has some wounds you hadn't noticed before. As she'll live. No, Gigi's gonna Gigi's gonna untie her and like set her down. Maybe hide her so she's a little more hidden. <laughs> Give her a little pound head. I don't hide her. Is there a cupboard? There's cupboards, right? Yeah, you, you could hide some people in some cupboards if you really wanted to. Yeah, I'm hide her in a cupboard. Okay, there's about 14 other people in, in various states of dying in the room as well. Oh, shit, really? Okay, I thought it was just like a couple. Okay. What? No, there's a... He, he was like sifting through piles of bodies trying to choose dinner. Shit. <laughs> Then, then you know what? Gigi's gonna leave her on the table. Just lay, lay her down. Though, <laughs> just, just, like, I don't, I just don't want to deal with this. They're there. This is too much effort. I'm just not that invested. I got shit to do. <laughs> Demons are coming out of the sky. Yeah, Gigi's gonna like pat, pat her head and be like, they're there. May good thoughts go your way after all of this. And you pat her cold, clammy head, but she does not, uh, not respond to you. It's fine. She's still alive. It's okay. Breaths are <laughs> shallow and labored. She's going to be okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, so Dr. Mordo is going to notice that Kermit is uh, lurking pretty shit. And uh, he's going to expend two uh, uses from his um, spell stored item, uh, in which I'm going to basically cast Cure Wounds twice. Yeah. For 29 HP regain. And basically, he just kind of like poofs some healing powder in your face for you to inhale. Oh, thank you. Yay. Not on the verge of death. I'll actually probably also be doing that as well for myself. Some cure wounds. Okay, another 16. Okay, I'm feeling better. <laughs> um. I didn't. I forgot to buy health potions, so 
<laughs> Whoops. I have four. Here you all stand in, uh, you know, this this kitchen full of human remains, uh, like demon ichor, and, uh, you know, you guys all covered in blood now. Um, not really sure what's going on. You got a demon portal close. The important thing is we're all here and we're all alive. Yeah, that little, if you guys are looking at the map, that tiny hallway between the kitchen and the library that says down, that's that's where Finley knows the uh, secret entrance to the armory is. Go, Finley. Go, Finley, lead us, because we don't know where we're going. Yes, I believe we were headed downstairs. Ribbit. Right, yeah, um, if if you guys are, are done causing a scene. I, not quite yet. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to polish off the rest of the cooking sherry. <laughs> uh, how much cooking sherry have you had? Uh, all that was available to me. Okay, so go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw. Now it's a party. Seven. A seven? Yep. Um... So you are, you're drunk. And not only are you drunk, but uh, some of the sherry was spoiled. So you've also taken on the poisoned condition. Right on. And he's going to burp loudly and be like, I've had worse. And he's going <laughs> to sloppily get up and follow along. Gigi's going to look over at Thurlow and be like, you don't look so good. Hey, you don't look so good. <laughs> Just belligerent. <laughs> <laughs> no, you! How? I know I'm not the most attractive, but my heart is good. I, I, you're true. I'm sorry. You're a good <laughs> friend. You know, I, I, I love you, man. And he's gonna get going for a hug. <laughs> okay, uh, Gigi's gonna hug him back and just pat him on the back and be like, You're good too. You're good too. <laughs> And uh, he just responds with a belch. <laughs> right, if we're all done hugging and kissing each other, we should proceed forward. And, uh, Dr. Mordow just kind of brushes past everybody. I will uh, follow suit. All right. Um, so when you enter this uh, little corridor here, there is also a door uh, directly across. Uh, you guys can surmise that this leads to the library. Are you guys going to check the library out? Or are you just going to go ahead and head downstairs? Uh, if anyone starts looking at the library, uh, the good doctor is going to be like, there's uh, a bony demon in there. We should probably just proceed bony down. Bony demon. Yeah, I just want to go straight to the straight shot. A bony friend? Does that mean that he will not be poisoned by touching me? Perhaps I can finally feel what a hug feels like. Ribbit. <laughs> Is Kermit rethinking his life choices now that he's meeting a bunch of evil monsters that aren't damaged by him? <laughs> yes, exactly. Alignment shift time. Wondering what he's done with his life. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are going to uh, head uh, down some stairs in this corridor, and you're going to find yourself in the Hall of Heroes. Um so down this hallway, uh, essentially on, on both sides, there are paintings of every important person who's ever, uh, you know, been involved with the, the king or the king's court of this castle. And every single painting, except for the painting of the current king, has been defaced with monocles, unibrows, mustaches, goatees, uh, you know, all the, all the fixins. <laughs> Uh, throw just comment. My landlubber's got some party art. Yes, it's quite invigorating. He knows that someday, when when there's free time, he'll have a uh, self-portrait of himself in uh, in his castle. Someday, when he's not busy, you know. Walking through a demon-infested castle, daydreaming of your self-portrait. <laughs> yep. <laughs> ah, when I own a kingdom, my portrait's gonna go right here. <laughs> Is there anything else in this room besides the paintings, John? Is there? I don't, I don't know. You t you tell me. I, I thought we were in a hallway. Are we not? Are we in the armory already? Uh, you're in a hallway. Okay, that implies at least one door. 
Uh, there two is doors. a door uh, directly opposite of the door you entered in. Okay. Is that the armory? Kermit's just gonna hit hippity hop. I have the map. I have a map that shows me where the um, fucking armory is. Where is the uh, painting at? Because I know where the painting is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the it's the one painting that isn't defaced. It's the current king. Perfect. Uh, do I need to investigate it? See how it opens, or? Uh, yeah, you can do that. Twenty-one. Awesome. Uh, the painting is an illusion. And it is, in fact, a locked door. All right. So, yeah, uh, Finley, uh, while everyone is just kind of walking around and talking about the paintings, uh, he walks up to the unmarked one, starts messing with it. And uh, how do you want me to do the locked door? Uh, if you have thieves tools, you can, make sure a, do. you can make a sleight of hand check using thieves tools. 28. Uh, was the door locked? No one knows. It it took you literally seconds to open it. It looked like you just jiggled the hand a little bit. Um, <laughs> so uh, you open the door, and this is the armory. Um, there's essentially racks and racks of some of the f- best crafted weapons any of you have ever seen. Uh, easily, all of them are plus three, if you want to metagame this. Um, there's also a, a wide selection of uh, studded leather armors, half plates, and full plate mails available. And then uh, Finley, uh, if you were to look at your map, uh, you would see that there's a trap door in this room. Trap door like? Uh, hidden under the carpet somewhere, perhaps. Oh, okay. So, like, a uh, secret door, not, like, yeah. trap gonna hurt person. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. a secret door. Awesome. Uh, I start Such. shooing everyone off the carpet and drag it away. And uh, there's a, a door right there. It is locked. I, I don't think you'll even need to skill check for it, but... My sleight of hand is uh, 18. Yeah, yeah so uh, you open it as well. And below, as you look down, you can see a ladder, and you see the shimmering of gold coins on the ground. Oh, man, now if only I had a way home. (laughs) I do have a way to get out of here if you require it, sir. You, You have a way out and you're just wandering around a demon infested castle? Well, yes, this is the first place I've encountered where people can hug me. It's very nice. Uh, sure. Um, Finley starts loading himself up with a small bit of gold, just in case. And, uh, I'm going to start swiping daggers. Okay. Yeah, you can take, uh, I mean, uh, so you can take as many, many daggers as you can carry. Well, if we're all just taking things, I think I'll borrow this here battle axe. <laughs> you can take a plus three battle axe. Plus three? Okay. Yep. Dr. Mordhau will, will take one of them half plates of the plus three variety, which means I get to put on my pre-prepared uh, other infusion because my uh, breastplate was a plus two infusion. Now I get to put on my spell refueling ring uh, Finley, while you're down there, you do see some other items stashed among the coin. Ooh, do tell. Uh, does anyone else want to grab stuff out of the armory before we uh, get into yeah, that? Yeah, Thurlow's going to grab. I'll grab a plus three axe. Yeah, Thurlow's going to stock up weapon and armor and uh, shovel as much gold into his pockets as he can carry as well. Okay. Although, oh, wait, that, actually, that's right. That's an, probably not much because I already have 68,000 gold. <laughs> well, no, no, you have 68,000 gold worth of gems, of gems and jewelry. Right. So it's it's considerably less volume, but still. Yeah, um, I'll throw off my breastplate and grab a plus three ble- breastplate. Why not? Oh, if it's breastplate, I'll take that. Uh, it's instead. half plate. Oh, half plate? Oh, I can't yeah. wear half plate. Half plate, full plate, and studded leather. Yeah, never mind. I mean, you can wear half plate. It's still medium. Is it? I thought... Yeah, half plate is yeah. the highest tier medium. Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a tiny dude. I don't. I didn't think I could uh, I wear... think only heavy has a strength requirement. Oh, okay. So, Finley, 
uh, you see a few items down there that kind of stand out amongst the the treasure hoarded down there. Uh, you know, different. You know, there's you know, gold. There's jewelry. There's crowns. Uh, you know, ornate goblets. Um, you see a large belt with sort of this uh, carving of a uh, very masculine, angular face with a crown on it. There's a like a plain. Uh, piece of wrought iron in the shape of a flask. There's a straight sword with a jewel encrusted jade handle. There are two bottles of milky white liquid. And there is a sword with a, uh, you know, a full silver sword with a very ornate winged cross guard and a uh, blue gem uh, inlaid in the handle. Ooh. So while I'm digging around in gold, and you hear it just like kind of falling around the place, you hear me squeal in delight as I start to scurry a little faster and I start tossing all these things uh, up into the room. All right, start to start arming yourselves, make yourselves useful if we're going to get out of here alive. Oh, let's see. Would I... Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to identify shit. <laughs> yeah, would I be able to determine or identify any of this? Um, I would say that you could probably identify <clears throat> uh, the two bottles of liquid with a good roll. Um, okay. The weapons, the flask, and the belt would probably require some uh, experimentation or the identify spell. Uh, I'll roll on the liquids, I guess. Okay. Uh, give me two separate, uh, hang on one sec. Damn, I should have taken identify. <laughs> um, I'll take an arcana roll, an investigation roll, or a survival roll for this. Um, we'll go investigation. Okay. And I've got a 25 and a 19. Okay, so you open the, uh, first bottle and uh, the stopper has a small brush on it. Um, it smells strongly of alcohol, and you recognize this as some kind of solvent. Um, the other bottle is actually locked, but I don't think the, the DC would be really enough to worry about with you. Uh, so you pop it open, and uh, you immediately recognize the smell as sovereign glue. There is one ounce in the container. I'm gonna post those up real quick. Oh, just so you know, I just did a. I just took one of my healing potions. Okay. I don't think that was important to say out loud, but just in case. So what was it that was uh, in the middle of the room? That's some hella strong glue, dude. When it takes a wish spell to break. <laughs> oh my god. What were you asking, Chris? Um, what were the items that were thrown into the center of the room? So apart from the two that Finley just identified, there is a uh, like a large belt with the uh, carving of a face with a crown on it. There is a piece of wrought iron in the shape of a flask. There are two swords. One is a uh, smaller uh, straight sword with a jade handle covered in jewels. And the other one is a fully silver long sword with a ornate winged cross guard and blue gems uh, laid in the handle. Uh, Thoreau's gonna drunkenly stagger up with the plus three rapier in his right hand and he's gonna grab the jaded uh, short sword and uh, He's gonna laugh to himself and be like, oh, oh double the damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you, uh, as you pick the sword up, uh, you, you kind of feel like the synergy between you and the sword, and the sword takes the shape of a rapier in your hands. <laughs> He's gonna perplexedly look at it and be like, huh, where'd it go? 
Dr. Mordow is going to look at the belt. Okay. Uh, you want an investigation roll on that, or...? I, as I said, you'd need the identify spell or some experimentation to figure this one out. Ooh, what kind of experimentation? I don't know, dude. What do you got? Put it on. Put it on and see what happens. I guess, yeah, he puts it on. Okay. You feel stronger. <laughs> uh, Kermit's going to look at this sword and then look at the big half orc, and I'm just going to be like, I am too tiny to carry that sword. Perhaps you should take it. I don't usually uh, condone violence, but if you say so, I guess I'll uh, I'll take it. And I'll take the sword from Kermit. Okay. <laughs> and uh, as you pick the sword up, you sort of feel like um, you've been given holy purpose, and it becomes a great sword in your hands. Holy Avenger? Yep. So now it's a great sword. I have a great axe and I have a great sword. Um, and then I guess uh, Kermit will pick up the piece of iron. Putting on the belt and not getting a whole lot from it, I feel like minorly stronger or something that gives me the uh, the taste, but not the full power. I'm going to take the belt off and hand it to... Uh, GG. <laughs> oh wow, I just I get I get all the gifts today. Is it my birthday? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Oh, you, uh... it's a birthday. <laughs> Thor is gonna loudly and drunkenly start singing happy birthday. <laughs> Be surprised that I am being this generous. I yeah, I, I don't know if it's my birthday. I feel it is of most use for you though. Oh, well, thank you. Is it an actual flask, or is it just shaped like a flask? It is an actual flask. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to pop the cork and give it a whiff. Okay. Uh, so you pop the cork open, and you get to smell it, and it, it doesn't smell like anything, which is kind of strange, because you're sort of expecting maybe the smell of, like, iron or, you know, uh, rust or even just stale air. Out of curiosity, you, you peer into the flask, and it's a void. There's nothing inside and it goes on forever mm, well perhaps i can find a use for this later and i'll cork it back up and put it in my pocket Alrighty. okay john so we have the luck blade for chris we have the holy avenger for zoe zach picked up the belt of the storm giant and then gave it to zoe david got the sovereign glue and the universal solvent, and I got the iron flask, right? Yep. Cool, cool. Oh, you guys, if you're 10 foot radius from me, you get an advantage on saving rolls, throws, against spells or other magical effects, just so y'all know. Is that a thing from the belt? No, from the sword. Ooh. Yeah, so stay 10 in a 10 foot radius from me you want to not die or at least have advantage <laughs> and i don't know the uh i don't know the command word yet do i john we'll say that uh your uh your patron the raven queen has whispered it in your ear okay cool yeah, so while Gigi's low-key flexing because he feels very strong all of a sudden, but he's not used to it, so he's, like, bashfully flexing. He's going to be like, well. Or he's, like, flexing, but he, he's trying to look like he's not flexing. <laughs> exactly. He's, like, holding his book, but in, like, a flexing in fact, manner. Uh, <laughs> Gigi, are you wearing, like, a shirt right now? Yeah. G well, no, Gigi's wearing his cloak, but maybe, like, yeah. He can show his arm. Okay, so, like... Not gonna lie, like that cloak's feeling kind of tight. Like it's pinching your arms a little bit. It's riding up on your <laughs> armpits. The the sleeves feel like they're about to tear. Uh, is there anything else of importance in this room? No, not not that I know of. Shall we proceed? Want to get this over with? Yes. Let us find who is responsible and then put an end to them. But let's let's try talking to them first before you know we put an end to them. Okay. Right, because that worked so well last time. 
I mean... Yes, you, you can try talking to them while we set up to engage them, as that will probably not work. But you never know. We should always try. See, when I learned in the war, violence was meaningless. So we should always give people a chance. Very well. Ribbit. Thank you. Hector scoffs. Aye, well, it worked out so well last time, didn't it? I mean, he didn't kill us outright, did he? Hey, well, look at the shinies we've got. He's going to hold up his two swords. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see him, like, swaying back and forth yeah. at the same time with his two swords. He's just swinging just, like... him around. <laughs> He's like, you better stay the hell back. Let's just, just give me a chance, okay? Just, just let me try. As a druid in training, let me try. So after exiting the armory, when you're back out in the hallway, uh, there's a door opposite from how you entered the hallway that leads to a staircase that goes down. Down it is. Down the stairs. Down, down the stairs. Check the door real quick. Door is open. Awesome. And you guys proceed down to the dungeons of the castle. Uh, some of the cells are populated with people uh, unconscious and tied up. Uh, you see blood um, everywhere, pretty much as if you know bleeding bodies have been dragged out of the cells, and all the trails lead to a hole in the uh, basement that looks like it was created recently. Gee, I wonder where we have to go. Indeed. John, I'll hippity-hop down over to the edge of the hole and look down. I have the... Uh... Look in. It's a hole in the wall, not the floor. Oh, sorry. Okay. You're good. Uh, yeah, and I've got the goggles of night, so I've got 60 feet of dark vision to okay. look through. Cool. So looking in this room, you see uh, like a ritualistic circle carved on the ground with a large red gem floating about 15 feet above it. Uh, you can see magical energies coming from the circle and going into the, the gem. Um, you see these pathetic uh, creatures uh, dragging bodies into the circle and uh, stabbing them with the ceremonial dagger. And you can actually see the soul of the creature killed fly up into the gem, screaming in agony. Overseeing the whole ritual, you see a, a, a giant, uh, like 15 foot tall, winged creature just standing with his arms crossed. Okay. Dr. Mordhau has uh, walked up beside Kermit and can see the same thing as he has the same uh, abilitas of dark vision. The creature smiles. Does it see us or see them? It sees all of you. Oh, shit. Thank you for listening to our Halloween special. Part three will release on Saturday, October 30th. Our intro and outro is Vanishing by Kevin McLeod, used under a Creative Commons attribution license. Link in the description. Background music provided by tabletopaudio.com, used under a Creative Commons attribution license. Tracks include Barovian Castle, Cry Havoc, and Castle Jail. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at AreWeDeadYetPod, and check out more of our shows at OneUpPodcasts.com. Thank you so much for listening.